Since Woomer is a very tiny bone, let's discuss its anatomical landmarks in detail. You know that the Woomer is in median plane? Median plane means it is towards the midline of the body. Its anterior portion is mostly bent to one side. You can also say it is somewhat quadrilateral in shape. It has two lateral surfaces and four borders. If you have a closer look, there we have a superior border, an inferior border, anterior border, and posterior border. Now moving on, on each surface, there is an anterior inferior group present for the passage of nasopelatine nerve, so named as nasopelatine group. Lateral surface on each side is covered by a mucous membrane. There are markings like furrows showing the passage of blood vessels. Now on either side of this deep midline furrow, which is called the Boomer Rostral Canal, the ella or wings are present on the superior surface of Boomer. Ella are the thickest part of this bone and are tightly oppressed to the sphenoid bone. You must appreciate the nasopelatine grooves running anterior inferiorly on both sides of the ella. The perpendicular plate of the woomer is a thin vertical sheet of bone on the midline below the wings. After the surfaces, now let's discuss the borders of the woomer bone. If you look at the skull from this view, we can appreciate the superior border of woomer which is thick and is grooved between the two diverging ali. The groove fits over the sphenoidal rostrum. The margin of ella intervenes between the body of sphenoid and vaginal process of medial pterygoid plate. The vimrovaginal canal is formed between the ella of woomer and vaginal process of medial pterygoid plate. Now, if we look at the inferior border, it articulates with the nasal crest formed by the maxilla and palatine bones of the two sides. Now, posterior border is free and separates the two posterior nasal apertures and it is non-articular. The anterior border is the longest and slopes downward and forward. In its upper part, it articulates with the perpendicular plate of ethmoid and inferior nasal conchi, and in its lower part with the septal cartilage. Now you're familiar with all the important landmarks of Woomer bone. Interestingly, this bone does not have any muscles or ligamentous attachment. Isolated boomers are rarely found and almost never recovered intact. So after knowing the whole anatomy of this delicate bone among its identification, I might tell you that as boomer is a very thin and small bone, it may be confused with other small and thin bones such as sphenoid bone. But you can identify it from the ella and the perpendicular plate that is symmetrical with a free posterior ridge. As you can appreciate the symmetry, this is also the best guide for identification. This symmetry is important due to its midline placement. After knowing the whole anatomy of this delicate bone among with its identification, I might tell you that this is a very prone to fracture bone due to the prominence of external nasal skeleton. Commonly, that might occur due to the blunt trauma of the nose. A common sequela of nasal fracture is permanent deformity. So nasal fractures causes the permanent deformity due to the disruption of bone and cartilage. So that's a wrap up now. I hope you learned the whole anatomy of this bone. For further lectures and query, keep watching scalia.com. Thank you.